In this episode, we dive into an ITLA kit. It's got a lot of parts, but great results. We convert a Matchbox garbage truck. Well, I dive into the plethora of details I have on hand using a fellow modeler's solution to organization. And lastly, here are the curmudgeon's gripe of the week. All in this episode of Sue the Milwaukee Road. All right, here we're diving into an ITLA scale models kit, and this is the Albany Manufacturing Company kit. And before you get into the, ooh, it's a craftsman kit, I don't really like building things like this, I've found that you can take these kits and make them as complicated as you'd like or as simple as you'd like. And I like a lot of the detailing, so we're going to make it complicated. But when you look at this particular spread, it looks like a lot of pieces, but it actually goes together fairly well. If you ever had Legos as a kid, you can build this kit. As you can see, they've added a few elements. There's some signs and so forth. They give you some instructions, as well as a few different ways you can build it. So take a look here. We've got some basic uh, ladders. We've got some doors. We've got the walls. And uh, we've got another set of walls. You can take these pieces and construct it in a lot of different ways. In this particular case, I end up breaking these pieces off just using a sharp X-Acto knife, and I start laying it out. I mock it up. None of this stuff is glued together, including these walls. I just have it mocked up to get an idea of what I'm going to build. And once I'm happy with the actual structure and the way it's going to kind of lay out, I start to put the facade on and getting a feel for the way the actual building is going to look. And once I'm happy with the way it looks, I start gluing it together. All right, here's a real cheese ball for you. What year did the Milwaukee Road route to the west meet its demise? Was it A, 1926, B, 1977, C, 1980, or was it D, 1986? We'll find out later in this episode. All right, now that we've got it glued together, I might as well give you a little behind the scenes to see what holds this thing together, and it happens to be stir sticks. As you can tell here, you can pick up stir sticks from your local hardware store, and I won't tell you where I got this one, but yeah, give away. they sure do come in handy. I use them for a lot of different applications, and in this particular case, it's for the stability of the building as well as preventing warping. And uh, this kit itself, it's going to be nice because you're able to just snugly fit this in. <laughs> I think you said snugly. And be able to get it glued together, and you have a nice firm building. All right, now the actual building itself is made out of a composite material, and the trim that I just added is actually made out of wood. So I'm using Elmer's wood filler to be able to actually fill in the pores of the wood, and uh, that's just so I can make it look a little bit more like concrete when I go to paint this thing. Now the wood filler itself is actually fairly soft and easy to apply, but you don't want to get hasty and get it all over. All right, here it is. It's about dry and ready to sand. Now, I did create a tool to be able to sand this and make sure it's nice and flat. This tip was actually passed on to me by Bob Rivard. Ooh, here's a 10-second tip. I simply take a 400-grit wet dry sandpaper, a piece of steel, and double-stick tape. I create this piece to be able to have a sanding block to be able to work on models. Thanks a lot, Bob. And no, you don't need it to be steel. You can use wood. As you can see, this is the application of using that sanding block to smooth out the surfaces. <laughs> Got a fairly fine edge here. I'm happy with the, where it's at, and we'll end up finishing the rest of this. All right, just a few more touch-ups to address. There's a few little marks and nicks that uh, I'll end up filling in and smoothing out, but pretty content with where it's at, and it's ready to get paint. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to hold back on one of my favorite things is actually detailing, and I've got a few detailed parts, as you can see here. It's such a pile, and it's such a mess. I never really figured out a good way to organize until Tom Gazer pointed out using baseball sheets. Who's Tom Gazer? If you haven't checked out Tom's YouTube channel, it's Split Rock 323 for the Split Rock Mining Company. He does an exceptional job at modeling, adds a lot of photography, as well as a few additional tips and information that he shares with all of us modelers. And we'll just take a look at a little run-by here. For anybody wondering about those little colored gumballs that are on the ore loads, Tom actually uses those as indicators for his operations. So I end up taking Tom's tip and putting it into action. I end up actually getting a railroad BN binder, which is perfect in this application. It's a nice kind of thick binder. And I end up putting all these uh, details in. I have them all organized just like back in the day when you used to have trading cards. Well, same type of thing. I've got them organized by type. And uh, who knows, this might be the future of trading. Hey man, I'll trade you a Leslie and an M3 for the Hancock air whistle. USB of another planet. Dude, I think that's a fair trade. That's an air whistle. Right, look. Tiny DR train cut man. It's just an air whistle. You gotta come back to it. Take out the papers and the trash. 
Well, what we've got here is a Matchbox garbage truck. <laughs> they were busting apart, and we're going to put this C-cab onto the actual truck itself. I just have to cut the cab off. But looking at a prototype photo, it's going to be kind of a hodgepodge to be able to create it. But that's what it takes to be able to build something like this. Now, I have the interior here. I'm going to modify the actual interior with the cab to be able to sister them together and create this little monster. <laughs> All right, I've got it close. I've got some A-line wheels put onto it, but I got to strip the rear of the actual uh, garbage truck, and I end up using Citrus Strip, which is a stripping gel, instead of isopropyl alcohol or wash away, just because of the thickness of the paint that is on a Matchbox car. It just takes a lot more to get it off. As you can see here, I've gone through a number of different applications of this uh, stripping gel, and eventually you get it all cleaned off and get something looking like this. Not too bad. Next step is going to be primer, but we'll do that another time. All right, do you have your answer for what year you think the Milwaukee Road's route to the West met its demise? Did you guess the year I was born? C, 1980? The BN merger eroded the Milwaukee Road's specific extension superiority and thus was responsible for its demise. Well, so rumor has it. All right, so the building has been shot with a Rust-Oleum gray primer, and my goal here is to kind of give this a more modernized feel. This building is supposed to be representing 1986, so it's been painted all gray. And of course, I test fit everything. I test fit all the detail parts to see where they're going to sit or fit, just to kind of get a feel for the building itself. That's one thing I really like about these ITLA models, is the ability to be able to manipulate and change the building to work the way you want it to work. So I start pulling all the detail parts off and getting them ready for paint and weathering. I end up adding a little bit of detail to the building itself by using Doc O'Brien's weathering chocks. I have a soft bristled brush here that I'm going to then apply just a little bit of white powder onto the actual building. Mix a little rusty brown, a little grimy black, just kind of a smattering of all of these to give myself an effect that ends up being presentable for the building itself. Here we're working in just white. This is to bring in some of the uh, the actual grout around the brick. I'm not trying to emphasize that there's actual grout there. Um, I end up toning this down, and the white that looks stark right now will get knocked down once I spray a dull coat over the top of this building, so it's not going to be this prominent. So as we look on the left, is pre-dull coat on the right is post-dull coat. You can see how much that white gets knocked down after you've applied the dull coat. So when it really comes down to the actual application, if you go a little bit heavy, it's okay because you're going to be able to back off. And as you can see on the left three panels of the building, I've actually started to introduce grungy gray and grimy black, as well as paint the concrete and some of the black fixtures on the details of the building. And I've got some more painting to do, but that's about as exciting as watching paint dry, so we'll fast forward real quick. <laughs> The concrete around the edges obviously has been painted as well as adding a few details. Here's one thing I can't stress enough. Don't throw anything away from the kit until you're completely done with the kit. Because here we've got the sidewalks. Those are actually the sprues and extra pieces that were left over from the kit. The sidewalk and the step that goes inside, same thing. That dock, it wasn't that long. I actually extended it a little bit. That set of stairs that's at the bottom, same thing. I ended up custom making those out of just some of the extra sprues and pieces that were left over from the kit itself. Talk about Ooh, he's a genius. Well, that's thinking. Brilliant. All right, I don't want to dive into every little detail, but this one I think is worth pointing out, and that's actually creating the slabs of concrete just outside the loading dock. I use this scaled 5x10 little rectangle and start scoring the piece of concrete to give myself the illusion that they're all individual pieces of uh, poured concrete. And it uh, ends up being kind of a slick technique. It's definitely worth doing and adds a little bit more realism to your scene. And speaking of realism, let's take a look at the real scene. I have a little bit more uh, yet to do. You can see i got a guy out here smoking. He's got a uh, door propped open with the old ash can, trash can. And uh, the scenery in the area needs to start to get uh, kind of tied in and tied together. But uh, you're getting a loose idea of what I'm, I'm shooting for. Uh, the ITLA kit itself went together really well. I, I took it a lot further than I anticipated. But I feel like if you're going to take it uh, that extra mile, you might as well make it worthwhile. You can see I added a mailbox there. And the little scrap load there is a uh, rusty rail. They've got some cast detail parts that uh, are nice to add to your scene. As well as these, uh, these are Neo uh, vehicles in the foreground. Definitely a sharp ad and uh, well worth looking at. But let's stop looking at stuff sitting still and see some stuff in action. Here's the SW 1500 that's going to push this boxcar out of the way so we can see the ITLA building in all its glory.
Well, as fun as it was building the ITLA kit, it's definitely a lot more fun to see it in its uh, element as we take a look here at the final shot of the SW1500 as it pushed the m and box out of the way. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Soothe Milwaukee Road. All right, here's the curmudgeon coming at you for the drive of the week. It's actually the flea market. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, that's right, a flea market. It's not where you get bed bugs. It's where you can buy yourself some trains at a good price. Well, so much of the stuff now is bought on the interweb, and you end up finding out that that ends up costing a lot. Boy, this is an expensive hobby. Is it really? You can show up at a flea market, and occasionally there's a guy that might have plots, and he's going to end up selling all this stuff for next to nothing. That's what you're looking for is the deal. The deal is what you're looking for, but you're all on the interweb, looking at all kinds of, here's a picture I took. Please hit like, send me a smiley face, and tell me how good it looks. I bought this for $10,000. Well, that's just an afternoon blue box. I think you overpaid there, son. Well, that's all we got from the curmudgeon's grab of the week. Yeah, that's right. A flea market is not where you get bed bugs. It's where you can buy yourself some trains at a good price. <laughs> Be sure and hit the like button. You can click here to subscribe. You can also check out other episodes of Soothe Milwaukee Road, as well as take the tour of the GN in 1970.